All right, our kind of people fans, this is my review for Season 1, Episode 8, entitled Sister Vention. Angela holds a sister vengeance for Leah, whose marriage to Raymond is still on the rocks. Teddy's birthday celebration includes trying to one-up Alex and keep Raymond at bay. Nikki and Nate attempt to bond. So this was a pretty solid episode that, again, I would, I would say a 10 out of 10 because... The Harlem Renaissance theme of Teddy's birthday party was fantastic. I love the visuals, the outfits, the dancing. It was great. But this particular um, video itself is unique because for the first time, I just sat back and watched the episode as opposed to taking notes every few moments. Uh, you know, because I felt like with this show being so fast paced, it moved around so much that in the past it would take me probably close to 70 minutes just to make sure I have all the notes but instead of that I just watched the full episode and it kind of flowed so well that I do have notes in front of me but it's barely half a page because you know it's like well it makes sense to talk about the Raymond and Jack stuff in one go as opposed to like the three separate times they did at different points of the episode so I feel like this really condenses things and hopefully makes the video easier to digest but let me know if you like this style and if i need to change it back to my normal format next week but remember next week is episode 9 aka the fall finale so after next week's episode our kind of people is going to be off the air until sometime in 2022 i don't know if that mean, means it'll be back in january or february who knows i just know it's three episodes left so why not air them i don't know but uh let me know what you think in the comments about that but before moving forward in the video make sure you hit the thumbs up button to show you like it hit subscribe as we move closer to 200,000 subscribers hit the bell icon to select all that way you don't miss out when i post content on the channel and follow me on social media links are in the description below so the episode starts off with teddy you know in the kitchen the family is just happy he is back from the hospital Alex is on the television pretty much telling about how uh, the stocks are going down for um, Franklin Holdings given the fact that Teddy's currently recovering from his surgery and at this point you know the best way to kind of sum up the beginning is this is Teddy's birthday and he kind of hands the keys of the kingdom aka Franklin Holdings over to Leah because you know after his near-death experience he's had the chance to rethink some things and look you need to know that I've always groomed you to take over the family business. So you go in there and handle it. So that was pretty good for Lee at that moment. However, as the episode goes on, you know, she talks and confides into uh, Angela about the situation that a lot of the stockholders and whatnot, they're kind of holding out because they don't believe in Leah having the same gusto as her father so really until her father gets back the business is kind of you know on shaky foundation but regardless um she's going to do the best she can to make sure everything is held together uh there's also a great moment where angela talks with um teddy about everything that's been going on and you know he apologizes you know he's trying to make things right with everybody because again he almost died and he realizes that he's done wrong by a lot of people He's trying to do right by a lot of people, but then there are some people he's still giving the middle finger to, a.k.a. Raymond. And he mentions how, you know, I'm looking over uh, the Harlem Renaissance. You know, that's always a big theme uh, for, like, the family. Like, there's a piece of art that my brother really loved, and it was sold, and I'm trying to buy it back. So I want to secure it in his name because that's a, you know, the Harlem Renaissance, you know, looking in history books and whatnot. Despite how depictive it is and the artwork being beautiful, I feel like... If you weren't there, you can't really embrace the full experience. And as we move forward to the party, we really see that in action. So uh, she also is reassured that Tyreek's a nice person and whatnot. And, you know, he's still dealing with a lot after learning from the journals, how his father really died. And really, it's like a whole thing of like no more secrets between them. And they'll try to work things out. So Tyreek, you know is actually in bed with Angela at one point and later in the episode when the sister Vention takes place you know when Angela scoops up Leah from the collapsing Franklin Holdings because remember Leah is still dealing with the whole thing between um, Raymond and Alex and the company and her father almost dying that she needs a moment to just let go and unwind so 
when Angela and Leah are at like a resort, you know, at like a spa resort by the pool, it's like, hey, um, I take a drink. You tell me something that's wrong with you. You take a drink. I tell me something that's wrong with me. And of course, you know, between the Raymond stuff and whatnot, Angela talks about how Tyreek, he's really dealing with stuff considering his father was, you know, killed by suicide, not um, homicide. And as a result, he's doing more talking with his tongue sexually than emotionally. And, you know, yet again, kind of like um, how Teddy told Angela, Leah says the same thing about, you know, look, I've, lo I've known um, Tyreek most of my life. He's a nice guy. He just needs some time to work things out. And I mean, Raymond's the same way, but uh, it's just one of those things where Angela kind of reassures Leah that, look, I don't really know you that well. We've just met each other. Um, and we've just realized we're related, but I just know you're not the kind of person to give up, whether it be on your marriage to Raymond or, um, you know, taking over your, you know, our father's company, you're a fighter. So don't, you know, roll over and give up for anybody. So she gets up to get some drinks and Leah's like, wait, you know, they bring the drinks to us, right? So when Angela's gone, Jack stops by and it turns out that that kiss that happened was a quote unquote mistake. So I guess it's safe to say that. They've never really had an affair, but they've always had some kind of like attraction to one another. And at this point, you know, Jack hands her a key to his like hotel room saying, you know what? If you ever have doubts or if your marriage is falling apart, come to my room and we can have a good time. So Leah takes the car key and just sticks it into a purse. And that's really all we got about that for right now. Um, there's a moment where. Lisa from House of Pain is playing a character called Simone in this story. I believe that she is the granddaughter of uh, the head housekeeper of the Franklin estate. And she sees Quincy coming into the house and uh, he's coming back from his internship at Darman because his father's kind of grooming him to eventually take over the company because what it's been like seven generations of um, DuPonts working at that company alongside Jack and his family. However, you know, Simone mentions how, you know, I used to like you because you used to have that nobody's going to tell me what to do kind of mentality. Like you were, you had dreams of going to the NBA and whatnot. And I'm glad they're finally giving Quincy something to do in the show because it seemed like Lauren, his uh, sister, got the brunt of the development and story. So later on, um, not to skip too far ahead, but at the party, he actually talks to his father about the situation, about how he no longer wants to do the internship and he wants to be his own man because that's what his father told him to do. It's like, look, I don't care if, you know, this has been something that's been passed down for generations, you know, not to disrespect the DuPont name, but, you know, you've taught me to be my own man and carve my own path. And that's what he wants to do. And Raymond being the more understanding of the parents in this situation, you know, Leah and Raymond he seems to be proud of his son and it's luckily enough that he isn't resentful towards Quincy not wanting to take over the Darman name because earlier in the episode there's a moment where you know Teddy and Raymond are on the phone because Raymond actually comes back home and of course you know Lauren is ecstatic Quincy is like you know hey uh yeah this is great you know like he doesn't want to ruffle up some feathers because he knows his mom and dad are on the fritz I guess uh Lauren is the younger of the two and like she told um, Nikki before, she's closer to her dad than her mom. Um, you know, he's been gone long enough. So he tells that uh, Leah that, look, I don't care what you say. I'm here to fight for our family to make sure our marriage is going to stay together. And that's when Teddy calls saying, you know, you've pretty much squandered every last chance, every chance you've, well, basically your last chance of getting your company back because you upset my daughter you brought back your ex-wife who was destroying our family name legacy and impact in the community so yeah you you're pretty much done for darman is never going to be yours again and teddy's like i mean raymond's like well hey i want to fight for my marriage i want to fight for my company and unlike you old man i have real family i have people who love and care about me as opposed to you who tries to control everybody around you like puppets but i mean it when i say happy birthday you old bastard so these two are really at each other's throats but raymond did say a lot because um despite the situation of not having his company and his marriage being on the fritz and whatnot at least he really has something to fight for 
Whereas Teddy is just an old geezer who's alone. He might have all the power and money in the world, but those who love him are just pawns to him. So, yeah, I mean, you can stick it to him where you can. Now, uh, there's a moment where Nikki's out with her dad, Nate, and the police actually come by and, you know, Nate freaks out because he thinks he's under arrest and he's like, it's like, Nikki, call this number, 555-760, and then Nikki's freaking out because she has no idea what's going on. It's like, you know, again, PTSD, and Nikki, you know, realizes that the cops were going after somebody else and Nate apologizes, but Nikki was shaking up as a result, so... Um, the whole reason for them going out is because Nikki actually had a day planned, but Nate's like, Hey, Hey, hey don't worry. We don't have to squeeze in everything in one day. I'm going to be around for a while, but I need your help shopping so I can find an outfit for the party that, uh, Teddy's having for his birthday. And later on at the actual party, Nate, every again, everybody is looking the part of that era in time. I could rewatch that portion of the episode on repeat. Uh, just to look at the different outfits everybody had on. But Nate talks to Angela about the situation. Um, and, you know, Angela says, you know, she'll talk to Nikki about it later on. And Tyreek and um, Angela are there. And Tyreek is just there to have fun. He doesn't want to think about the whole situation with his father. So he's kind of cold and distant to Angela. But, you know, again, he's really going through a lot right now. Earlier in the episode, him and Teddy have a conversation where Teddy tells him that, look, Hey, um, it's not your fault I had a heart attack because again, Tyreek is upset because he thinks he was the one that caused it, but that it wasn't that. Um, but he just reassures him like, look, your father was so good to me. He was a confidant and I was keeping his true demise a secret, you know, to get the insurance money to give to you and your mother to be taken care of. But, you know, basically he just reassures Tyreek like, you know, we need to stay strong together. And as a result, they make up, but still that doesn't change the fact that, he's still wondering how his father really died you know suicide yes but why why did it happen the way it did so at the party there's a moment where quincy walks up to um his uh grandfather and says hey um grandpa the press is here he he and then teddy's like oh snap because he knows like, okay alex is here we got to handle this so he comes in and it's actually a surprise that um nikki lauren leah and angela they learned one of the dances from back in the day and they perform it to a t it felt like something from dancing with the stars and again the party's great everybody's having a good time and um you know that's really all there is to say about it it's really great to see everybody putting on a show so to speak so alex or anybody from the press will know that teddy franklin is back with a vengeance so there's nothing to worry about so as the party comes to a close you know there's like an after party at the beach you know for the young folk if you will so quincy tries to sneak to the um the quarters of the franklin property where the you know the staff is and he meets with simone to let her know that hey i talked to my dad i told him i formed my own path why don't you come to this party and then her grandma is like it reminded me of that scene from uh dream girls where um well uh jimmy early goes to the back of the bus to try to hook up with one of the girls but then like their caretakers like uh, -uh hollywood is at the front this ain't Hollywood. Go back up there. So it felt like that. So we got cock blocked. So afterwards, um, Raymond actually meets with uh, Jack because Jack assumes that it was uh, Leah. So he comes in there and says, oh, OK. So earlier in the episode, when I came by the tennis court to tell you to sign these documents to help me get back Darman, you didn't want to do it. But now you signed it because apparently Teddy offered him. Uh, you know, quite the comfortable fallout. Like, hey, it, Jack, if you sell your shares of Darman over to me, you'll get X amount of money. And then it's Raymond by himself fighting for Darman. So at this point, they're done. There's no more business between him and his family because at the tennis court earlier in the episode, Raymond said, hey, you signed these documents. And, you know, Jack is like, wait, why would I sign it? Why would we fight this, man? I mean, Darman is being, you know, taken are you know from saved from um you know drowning by franklin uh the franklin company that means less work for me and you so why are you busting your ass to do it and he's like look unlike you i'm trying to secure a future for my family so 
it's just one of those things where, you know, like it was mentioned in episode two or three, how Raymond and Jack are just different, where it's white privilege versus a black person who has to do, you know, 150% more effort just to get half of what the white man has. So it's not like there's a generational wealth thing going here with Teddy the same way it is with, uh, I mean, excuse me, Raymond that it is with Jack. So after that, you know, Jack is like, so since we're being honest and we're no longer business partners, you know, with uh, Leah and you don't work out, you know, I'd like to. And at the very mention of that, Raymond beats the hell out of Jack. And he's like, you know what? We're done. And then he walks out and Jack has left a bloody pulp on the floor. And it's funny because in the preview, we know Olivia is about to have a round or a go at Jack later on, too. And shit's going to get serious. So. Um, there's also a portion of the episode where Angela goes to Leah because she's sitting outside of the uh, um, uh, the hotel room because she was thinking about going into the room. And then that goes back to what I said earlier in the video where Angela tells Leah, you're not the kind of person to just give up because she feels like I ought to just cut the umbilical cord on my marriage right now by going in there with Jack. But again, Angela tells her not to do it because you're better than this. So Somehow, um, there's a moment where Lauren actually finds the pass to the room in her mom's car and she calls the hotel number and Jack is on the phone and she hangs up. So she automatically assumes, oh shit, my mom's having an affair because remember she walked in on her and Jack kissing back in episode two or three. So keep that story beat in mind. But as we get to the end of the episode, um, you know, we have Angela and Nate talking at the house. And like I said before, um, he would make sure to talk with Nikki about the whole PTSD with the cops. And from there, Tyreek comes in randomly and it looks like he's a bit drunk. And he tries to talk because like, hey, Angela he wanted to talk. But then he sees her and Nate together, assuming that they're getting together. And, you know, before anything can really start up, he just decides to leave. And that pretty much leads to the end of the episode. But regardless, uh, I love this episode. It was great. Um, it's sad that our kind of people isn't really getting the ratings it deserves, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think is going to happen next? How are you liking the series? And like I mentioned before, like, and subscribe. And if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or cash app.